Good morning. Importance of dying is the theme of this video. And dying as a term that linguistically describes the death of a physical corpse might uh, signify something there is a misunderstanding of uh, space-time phenomena. We are consciousness that never dies. And on many levels of the universe, all beings experience themselves as one consciousness. And the space and the energy that projects the forms of these beings and of these worlds is all seen, felt and lived as one energy, one space, one source, one God. And even one love because there is no, in the appearance of different forms there is no feeling of actual separation so we call these realms the superconscious realms and obviously <coughs> when you are there uh, you are an eternal being whatever is your form you are an eternal being because there is no cycle of time that would uh, necessarily destroy you but you have the ability to shape shift the form so you can destroy it and at the same time you can recreate it into something new and that becomes the animation if you want to experience that or you can sit still and no time will be passing etc there are many many different games and different realms and the truth about human experience is that this is a game <laughs> it's really a huge lull once you get back into the eternal realm it's a after and after every death after every horror if you get to the other side it's a huge giggle it's a huge giggle it's <laughs> it's for the lows the game is for the lows now in order to this game to function uh, we need to have the separation of forms also to have the illusion of separation of consciousness so we can perceive each other as the other and then we can either find liking or disliking because we can definitely commune in bliss love but that's not a default <laughs> throughout the human experience. That is not a default. That is like when you feel love, it's almost like, wow, it's amazing. Like, I'm in love. And then we make stories about relationships and romantic... Uh, we even die for love as humans. Or we kill for love. <laughs> like so. So a lot of things happen that are just like weird. Because where you're from, back home, that love is not a thing that is a transactional thing between you and another. It's, a, it's just, just a default state of being. Un unity of all things, right? And here this unity, this bliss love is such a height. They're almost... You have to fight for it in a way or sort of deserve it because 
our default state is the illusion between dualities that is light and the dark dark being the absence of light being the emptiness of that bliss not funny enough <laughs> the so I had this experience it was kind of funny there was like a okay so here it, there was a devil or Satan a scary looking dude with horns and I was consciousness spinning, I was on acid. <laughs> I was a consciousness that was going on a roller coaster ride, entering the mouth of the Satan. And the, so I was going like a clock and entering that, and the amount of fear that was being experienced would rise very quickly to like infinite excitement of fear, okay? And then, at the moment I entered the mouth of Satan, I would be at the peak of fear. Okay, it was like, ah, but it's almost like it was like sort of like exciting as, as, as a roller coaster ride. If you're surrendered to that experience, it's just like thrills you out, right? So it wasn't like a fear that I was resisting or making it like something bad. I was just in it. And it felt like, ah, you know, nah, right? And what happened when I came out through the other side? I was born in bliss of the sun, and the sun spat me out, and I would be like, woo! So, whew, and then, ah, ooh, ah! And so that is the basis of duality. It's a portal that has polar opposites. And then one is uh, made to chase us away. And one is attracting us. The love, the sun, is attracting us because we need to evolve towards that. And the other one is going to devour us. So actually, we have the experience of these emotions within our soul that is elevating us or giving us fear. And that would just mean that we are going to move from one into the other and slowly, slowly get growing. But what happens... <laughs> what happens once people realized after they were immersed in the game incarnated in the amnesia of this like human birth and you don't remember exactly God or how it looks on the other side in the superconscious even that's just architecturally disguised this is camouflage so you can have this experience we are here and we deal with this duality love and fear <laughs> and then some yogis or some other people they realize well it's a long path to evolve and then they discover that you were God all along but here's a short path there is this thing that you fear it represents to you death well just you go directly into its mouth and it ceases to exist <laughs> you see that you see satan and and you go directly through it and on the other side it did it was just like a holographic boogeyman that was producing some kind of emotion that is a simulation it's a part of this simulation and then you go to the other side and that does not exist anymore <laughs> and then you're standing in this void on the other side of the black hole that just ate you up and in that void you're like wait 
spot and there's nothing and then you look at what you are and there is no simulation there is no there is no human left and you're like oh my god who am i what am i and you realize yourself that you are this infinite consciousness so sometimes this game is this the game of duality in the human realm it's sort of more simple sometimes it gets very complex like right now in the world the level of the game of these like binaries it just created a whole lot of complexity so I am saying this because it's sometimes easier to just jump into the black hole and it's like one move that can give a relief to a being that is experiencing the simulation if we get really, really, really fragmented into this complexity. Because it's not that one human being is playing one game. Okay, I'm going to escape the devil and I'm going to go to Christ. Okay, so the Christ is the elevator to the sun, to the, heart, to, to the love and everything. So if you follow that, it should get you beyond and you can live a life of love and that also became the pathway and the knowing of every previous Christ being but in the age of duality when it, it's very enhanced this Christ they needed to sacrifice the way of the realized master was a way of the sacrifice because you are one guy in the game or you're one girl in the game that knows that everything is like fake everybody else is tripping balls on duality so hard that they don't know what's up and you can't explain to them because they're all between love and fear in so many stories and myths and legends and everybody's living out some persona some myth some legend in the simulation and whatever you say to them you're saying like if you if you went through the Christ or if even if you went through the devil and you realize what is beyond whatever you say to these people in the game it's gonna deny their legend it's gonna deny their emotions it's gonna deny their thoughts it's gonna deny their myth it's gonna deny their dream it's gonna deny their nightmare it's gonna deny their existence and therefore the word of Christ is bringing death to the simulation <laughs> and these people they're in the simulation and they want to play basically they're God who wants to play the game so you can't rattle their cage and then they are suffering because they're tripping balls and they don't know what's up but for them it's entertainment and for the liberated one they're gonna pull you into their suffering and like the story of Jesus or one of the story of Jesus that is represented by the religion is like you gain crucified <laughs> for saying things that you know why are you, go, why are you gonna go and say all these things like so we'll, we're gonna make you suffer because this is what we do with people who do not follow our myths <laughs> so <laughs> to break down duality people really they would shut the fuck up you know many people like uh, schools of magic etc they wouldn't interfere with the playing field they would just find some initiates who are ready to be transformed to to, to go through death initiations that are really figurative they're really imaginary you just transform the energies of your myth, of your legend, of your beliefs and your emotions 
through imagining that you're dying. This is also the left hand path of Tantra, but you know, to the people they are living the fragmentation of the myth, they don't understand the simple thing. You don't exist as this little character. <laughs> everything you're living, everything that you're telling yourself, it's a dream. Okay, it's true as an experience, it's real as an experience, you can have fun in it or you can like live out a nightmare and everything you will feel, but the emotions that you're feeling, they are simulation. And then your construct of a persona, it's a simulation, so you're a hero in a dream. All right, go have fun or you want to realize that it's all a game and it doesn't really matter. Come to me, I'll tell you a little secret. Imagine I just cut your head off and whoa, now you're liberated. Who are you now? And then without a head you are source again. So that was the... <laughs> that was the ritual, but it requires one who has given up on life, who has given up on their identity, to be able to become an in initiate to this type of <laughs> because you cannot you cannot maintain attachment to anything in this life experience and boy did I have trouble with I had somebody come to me and they said I want to be liberated and then their ego was saying that and <laughs> when I was like okay I need to like <laughs> like kill you they were the mechanism of their human was resisting it <laughs> it's like <laughs> so Now I don't want to be with any humans that are screaming and kicking and uh, trying to kick me because I'm telling them that they are tripping balls. Like I'm putting this video right here and whoever want to watch it, if it's for you, maybe you can find funny, maybe you can find some entertainment value, maybe you can discover a grain of truth. Maybe you will remember everything that you ever known beyond the veil of this simulation. What happens after this going through the veil, if you want to go the short path? Uh, you can certainly go the normal path and just live out the puzzle of your karma throughout your lifetime and then discover so many stories, so many battles of good and evil, so many choices of left versus right and just partake in that story until you play it out. It is for the play. No one ever really dies. But if one jumps through the bl black hole, then the whole energy of that individual memory or, or the karma is defragmented, it's recycled because there's no use for the karma if you already know what's behind and then purely the enjoyment is left you're like in a museum it's all smoke and mirrors it's all a phantasmagoria it's an illusion and you're like in a museum of everything that this illusion ever created and it's 
for the love. Also, the keys of the universe are back in your hands because you are reunited with Source, so you are not a delusional character in a delusional simulation, but you have that Christed consciousness, which is the consciousness of the whole universe. So you can contemplate that, or you can create something in this reality like channel a novel from another dimension like Frodo and the Lord of the Rings because that is another game that exists within the simulator that somebody, I don't know the name of that writer, but somebody picked up on it <laughs> and they, they transferred the description of that reality into this one <laughs> Or you can become a spiritual teacher and if some beings are caught up in a game and they are asking for the way out, you can point them towards the door. Now the door is simply hidden inside of this human being, inside of the head or inside of the heart. There are actually many pathways, but the doors of perception where you're seeing this reality from, this is where you also exit the reality. <laughs> but in between you and the door, it's all this mental contrast that's created from these binary opposites, the good and evil, the left and right. All, so to go through the labyrinth, you need to slay the Minotaur, that is, going through your own mind to find the door that is right there, there will be all these thought forms <laughs> that are trying to fuck with you in all kinds of ways, tell you stories and point you in different directions or scare you away. And so one time, but I already knew this, but I was going through this labyrinth to kind of like e exit this simulation to just dwell on the other side and on the door there was this like scary monster so I was like and it was trying to boo me away and like give me some com like confusing clues and tell me what not and I, so I said wait wait <laughs> I've been through this door before why are you trying always to point me in different directions or scare me away and the monster simply said you employed me to do so. <laughs> so the Demiurge of, or the Satan or what, whoever is employed to make God consciousness go schizophrenic in this experience is employed by the One itself. Who other than God can play tricks on God? <laughs> it's for the lols. <laughs> and not just that, it's for the journey of a small hero in an infinite adventure. When you are in this world, you seem like a tiny little human being in the world that is enormously infinite and you don't know where to begin and where, it, where all of it is going to end. But the space-time and all of the planes, all of the playing fields, the world, they are simply a projection that you are dreaming. So you're running around finding clues and you are going through the infinite dream. So let me wrap this up with uh, the importance of that. When we are in under the simulation, <laughs> the fear makes us feel nervous, 
and then we feel excited and then we want to do all these things solve all these problems it's like a it, it motivates our desire also to, it's because desire is only to escape some contrast so this contrast is always pushing us and pulling us positives and negatives we're trying to escape the negative and go to the positive the magician knows that already so the magician already died so the magician understands how to neutralize how to create the zero point how to find the sweet spot the balance between negative and the positive it's not to resist fear and not to cling on to desire and in that sweet spot everything envelops effortlessly the doings of that one are liberated from effort now the before one has died one is under the grip of pushing and pulling of clinging to love and escaping the fear but this just creates this just multiplies the neurosis and so today we are facing neurosis because we are defragmenting the the game what has been playing out not just in this lifetime but in the previous lifetime uh, for our ancestor and previous incarnations in this game uh, is collected within the soul as fragments of the, these experiences that haven't been zeroed out, that they haven't been fully lived. So they could be integrated, completed. And therefore, they linger with us and they manifest our neurotic realities all the way to the point where it becomes overwhelming for a being. And this is where I introduce the concept of liberation that one can assume a perspective where this perspective is the observer point, zero point, which is right here and in this perspective one does not need to take anything seriously anymore. It is easily inspected that everything is a phenomenal mischief, that it is a phenomenal dreamscape that it is a simulation and we can through our imagination in a non-attached manner dissolve And this is the unbecoming of the character. It is the unbecoming of the persona. It is the unbecoming of whatever was generated. In the simulator. And even this unbecoming, there is a certain fear because it is the game is rigged in a way that you don't want to die <laughs> you want to prevail <laughs> you as the character you don't want to die you want to prevail and the more you try to prevail the more the game extends and is there ever some satisfaction no it's just perpetual plus and minus and the dream goes on <laughs> And then, at one point, we get tired. And we're like, okay, what? I mean, what? <laughs> chasing money, chasing love, chasing this, chasing that, fighting for survival. And 
okay, what? And then Patanjali comes and says, and now yoga. So if you, <laughs> if, you've been the, if you have been the fool, the lover, the artist, the sage, the king, and everything in between, and you're like, now what? Well, yoga. Yoga helps you to defragment the story that is an energetic memory that is stored in this body, and we call it karma. It's energetic memory. Your subconscious, it makes up how you feel, what you think, everything. It's an operating system. If you do yoga, if you do especially Kriya Yoga, that operating system defragments like it's nothing. Because really to you, it's nothing. But you have to resort to your power from outside of the simulation, from the infinite power of the superconscious realm that channels them through the body and defragments this karmic vessel. Now, there's nothing wrong with karmic vessel. It allows the simulation to function and you get to be the small hero in the big adventure. And that's amazing. And, you know, even like, why the fuck do you want liberation? Go be your character. Go be the hero. Go slay the demons or do whatever you want. You want. It's fun to be in the world. Only if this fun becomes a mental prison that has too many labyrinths, is too fragmented, and we cannot maintain. It's where we want to surrender to God and give up. As long as the story works for us, we want to play the game. Spoiler alert, nobody's going to watch this video because there's a spoiler alert frequency that will disable anyone to actually hear this who are immersed in the play and they don't want spoiler. <laughs> this video will be seen by those that are seeking to be liberated. Because when you knock, the doors are open. When you ask, it is revealed. Before you ask, the game goes on, the dream goes on. <laughs> you have always been God and you always will be, but how long you want to maintain the immersion with the character, however long you want, it is allowed by the construct. And the devil serves you. <laughs> the devil gives you. God and devil together because they're in the end they are one they just look like it's two yeah it looked like this and that but it's one <laughs> he's giving you a play he's giving you a game so as long as there are experiences that you want to pursue you're welcome <laughs> And then it's either going crazy from the experiences or just saturating your desires to the extent of like having all of the experiences and then saying, now what? So it's either, okay, I give up. This great game is too crazy. I want to go out. Or I play the game. I want the game. I want this. I want that. I got this. I got that. Now what? And... The question that we ask within the game, within the simulation, the specific question that we ask can solve any problems. If, if we are in the maze, in the labyrinth of our mind, of our character, we are seeing perspectives that are very fragmented. We're just seeing a piece of the puzzle, a part of the labyrinth. You know, you're here, you're seeing from there, from here to there, and you're not seeing the whole puzzle. Now, there are some questions like, who am I? <laughs> or God, reveal yourself to me. <laughs> there are some questions that will directly, when they are asked fr with, from the core of your being, there are some games that will, uh, questions that will dissolve the game. They will dissolve all the labyrinths. They will just shift, nudge your perspective, shift your perspective to the absolute. And then all of the, everything that used to confuse you will be dispersed. There will be nothing left of it. The ego will momentarily dissolve.
but <laughs> the game is therefore designed that it gets down the densities it gets more complex and more complex and more complex and you are in this mental maze so all the ideas that you even get to ask are just like partial solutions to imaginary problems if you're really asking god reveal yourself to me now bro i don't care i surrender everything everything and i surrender my body my mind my emotions my stories I surrender everything the only thing that I want to know is absolute right now the absolute revelation then it shall be revealed instantaneously for you because that overrides the game completely but for that to be revealed you need to sacrifice everything that you think that you know everything that you think that you own within the simulation everything that you wanted to do everything that you're still clinging to, everything that you're still fearing. Ask and it shall be revealed. Knock and the doors will be open. <laughs> it was always like this. It's the kill switch. You kill the game. <laughs> but we find ourselves in so many shenanigans so many like mental spaghetti and we have a problem and we're suffering and then we simply ask god to relieve us of some suffering not to reveal itself completely it's just god give me some money god i want to have a lover god, god i want a house a car it's beautiful. I think that about wraps it up. Enjoy whatever you're doing. If you can. Oh. <laughs>